Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, your world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name's Connor. I got Tony K with me. Whoop, whoop. Thank you for joining me on the cannabis end. Okay. Uh, that's, but, all, that's all the enthusiasm we have. That's all I the enthusiasm. I ain't done. I ain't done. That's all the enthusiasm we have in the studio. Let's hear it. <laughs> all right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> there we go, Tony. My number one hype man. Before we get into today's topic, I just want to thank you all for listening to our talk show, Cannabis Talk 101, all around the world. And make sure you check out our website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we have so many great articles and blogs on our site. Feel free to call us and leave a message anytime, 1-800-420-1980. And check us out on YouTube, at Cannabis Talk 101, as well as Instagram, and click that follow and subscribe button. And you can follow Blue at one Christopher Wright and Joe Grande at Joe Grande 52. Now, Tony, I know you're the numbers man, so I don't need to tell you this, but numbers are the what language of business Woo. and easier accounting is on a mission to That's change the standard That's in accounting do. by making a difference in people's businesses and their homes. I so if them. you're looking for accounting built for businesses, then you need to check out easieraccounting.com. They're a full service accounting firm that specializes in services that include tax preparation, entity formation, payroll, basically all of the things to making owning your own business that much easier. And they do more of all of that stuff that you hate doing. Go check out the website, easieraccounting.com, or call them direct, 888-620-0770. That is 888-620-0770. Make better time for your business and call Easier Accounting today. Their name's in the company, brother. There it's we go. Easier accounting. They easier make, accounting. They make accounting easy. So, Tony, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, You're brother, a, for having me. An invaluable member to our team, of course. Ta-da. And uh, you provide some great insight on the financial side of things that many people may not see. So. And you also seem to find the coolest things online, articles, things that people should be aware of. So, what do you got today for us, Connor? So we're gonna we're gonna take you down. Like, the, the green lane of cannabis. And the first headline we have here is that a uh, medical cannabis user fired from transit job and loses appeal over state's he denial. He was a tranny? He was a tra- transit. Oh, tra- I thought you said transit. he got fired for being a tranny. I was like, well, that's... Throw those headphones yeah. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. So, so he, loses he got appeal, fired for being... Yes, for uh, having cannabis in his system. I think he was a bus driver. As a T... And, uh, you know, he loses his appeal over the state's denial of unemployment benefits. Wow. So the Vermont Supreme Court has ruled against a Rutland man seeking unemployment benefits after he was fired from his transit job for no, testing no, 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 no. positive for cannabis, despite having a legal prescription for its use. Evo Skorich worked for the Marble Valley Regional Transit District operators of the bus in Rutland for about four years until his termination in January of 2023. At the transit district, Scorich fueled, washed, and cleaned out vehicles. The eight-page ruling issued Friday by the Vermont Supreme Court sidestepped the issue of whether medical cannabis patient in Vermont has the right to use cannabis in the off hours from work. Instead, the decision focused on technical issues with the filing of the appeal. Scorch, according to the Vermont Supreme Court decision, challenged a Vermont Department of Labor decision, quote, declining to provide him with a declaratory ruling as to whether off-duty medical cannabis use constitutes as misconduct such that the claimant is disqualified from receiving unemployment security benefits. So that's, you know, it's obviously... It's a lot of words for what happened, Connor. Well, like, let's just break it down. Let's put through the blue yes. Essentially, you know, it's the uh, battle of attrition us cannabis users have of, you know, being able to uh, respectfully and responsibly use cannabis, but also be professional at the same time. And it's a bit of a gray area in terms of, uh, you know, you have your uh, employees versus someone who's trying to uphold policy. And I understand why it's you know very hard to navigate because federally it's illegal you know even though in a a state-by-state basis it can be legal and in more states now than not it is legal however i'm sure companies don't want to you know get the whip from the the government lines man you know everything you read nowadays it's got to be looked through like a lens of money right so as you reread that article let's look at it as like 
who benefits, who gains, you know, uh, there's, there's always a profit margin and a profit motive for everything that happens from incarceration to monetization by incarceration. You see where I'm going with this? Totally. Now, this is Vermont. You know, Vermont is pretty loose with laws and cannabis as far as I know, right? Like they were one of the... Yeah, like, and they're, you're, they're able on the, to, you're able to get a medicinal license. So clearly, like they have an infrastructure in place to be able to, you know, provide cannabis for their uh, the citizens who live there. However, I just think that it's irresponsible and disingenuine if you don't put the further infrastructure in place to avoid this situation. Right. right. Like you're you're putting you're someone into to fail. yeah exactly. So you know it's at not face taking a value. step further. Like what's going on there? Why would they do that? You know, they're nobody's just dumb. They're not doing these things because they don't think about them. There, there's always an agenda, and I think that's why you have me here too. Like, what's the money component of somebody? On the surface, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'd say the way I see it, I'm sure uh, Vermont is setting a precedent as to, you know, how they view cannabis and how it should be used. Um, you know, I like out of, you know, just one case, I don't really see this as being something that's like. You said a key word there. It starts with a P precedent yes sometimes they'll go after these obscure rulings or legislations to establish precedents and they'll go after it in you know some an area like uh would you say maine vermont like vermont's not la it's not something that's on the map right so they'll try to establish precedents in these circuit courts that says hey well they did it this way you, you follow where i'm going with this like for sure i love that you picked this article out of you know, most people don't know that this happened because well, it's, it's over there. Yeah, it's, it's in not Maine, big it's news. in Vermont. But it is, depending on how high the court legislation went. But the word precedence, like we didn't prepare for this segment, but that's what I hear. Yeah. They're trying to establish precedence. They're trying to point to that ruling to kind of just climb that ladder of whatever it is. But it's always, it's always money. Yeah, it is. And like I, just what I get frustrated about is like the lack of consistency. Like, okay, imagine... Now that cannabis is pretty much recreational and people like now vacation and like do tourist activities with cannabis in mind, like I think it would be frustrating if even as someone that's going from state to state, but also someone that's coming from out of the country to have to like come in and each state is different on how, you know, how they're handling it and, you know, whether you can, you know, operate with it, you know, what's the legal uh, amount? Like, I don't know. It's just too let, all over let the me, place. Let me... Let me take you to my little elder school because I'm a little bit older than you, right? Yeah, start me some so, wisdom. So when you say it's now recreational, right, you got to understand there's still majority of the states in this country where it's not. No, I, so, I get it. However, so there's the an access, enti- there the is access an entire, is, makes me say that there's it's There's an entire business, community, lobbyists, lawyers, legislators, infrastructure – that's making money when it's not legal. You see what I'm saying? Like, yes. so that's what these guys, like, it's just, it's so, there's layers to it, Connor. Like, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's so obscure that they're doing this. Yeah. No, it's, but it's the you know, other side of the money that's driving it. You follow what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. we're taking it for granted that it's legal. It's not. It's not for a lot of states. In a lot of states, it's actually monetizing and, you know, they're, they're, their goal or their their prize is that it's not legal for you, sure you follow where i'm going with that absolutely and so with that being said we're going to take a quick break but when we come back tragedy strikes a family in new york in what Ta-da. seems to be an unthinkable nightmare dun, dun, dun. it's cannabis talk 101 with blue and joe grande i'm connor this is tony k and we will be right back Woo. <laughs> La, 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 la. <laughs> That's well. Here we go. Wait, what's the next article? Uh, baby fatally mauled by dogs while parents smoked cannabis downstairs. Stop. That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going to take that? Like, 
just purely NPR well. style yeah. slash be responsible. <laughs> just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a shitty parent. Have you ever found yourself caught up and need a lawyer to help you out? Because we have the guy for you. Call our attorney, Mr. Freddie Sage at the Fox Firm. He has over 20 years of experience and has become one of the best known criminal defense firms and cannabis law attorneys in the state of California. From low level misdemeanors to high level felonies and any matters related to cannabis, the Fox Firm offers a free initial consultation on all legal matters. Call them now, 310-877-5033, or check out the website at www.thefoxfirm.com, and that is with two X's, not just one. Shout out, Freddie Fox. Yeah, shout out to Freddie Fox, our yeah, comedian slash... What's his comedian name, Connor? Freddie Fox. Mm. Freddie Sounds Sage. Like a, nah, is, Freddie, Freddie Sage Freddie. is his real name. Nah, Freddie, Freddie Fox is the stage name. And if he was a porn star, it'd still be Freddie, Freddie Fox. Fox yeah. just, he'd have Hello. a mustache or something. <laughs> Nah, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. Anything legal, y'all need. Love Definitely Freddy. reach out to him. He cooked up a feed here the other week, and it was uh, pretty damn good. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, nah, he, he cooked up some potatoes, some rice, some chicken. He's a man of many mysteries, I've realized. He is. He is. He's a renaissance man by uh, all meaning of that word. So what else you got, Connor? You got some more articles, some yes. fun facts? So this one's a bit depressing. Just Fuck. That's all I need it, on a Friday. Just keep it a bean or up a front. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a tale of... Whoa. Uh, you should take responsibility, a lesson of responsibility well, from this story. you should not do smoking weed. Bingo. So let's get into it. Or a parent. Baby fatally mauled by dogs while the parents smoke cannabis downstairs. Jesus, fudge. Yeah, wow. You know, my first impression of this, honestly, again, I'm not trying to go down like little conspiracy holes, but like, <laughs> like if these were tweakers or crackheads, it wouldn't have even made the freaking news. You know what I'm saying? Like. That happens every day with tweakers and crackheads. Like, they microwave babies, they do shit. You had a couple of stoners that, like, their dog was a pit bull, which happens every day. Happens to, like, corporate America every day. Again, not trying to play the other side. Just hearing your sound bite. Okay, so a dog, mauled some kids. Parents happen to have a fucking eighth in their safe. Boom, they were stoners. That's why the kid got mauled. Yeah, Is there more right. to this story? Obviously... Yes, there is more of the story. Right. Let me get into it, and then we can uh, give really our dissect. wisdom and opinions on this. That's, so I only have opinions. No <laughs> <laughs> a three-month-old baby was fatally mauled by two dogs while the child's parents were smoking marijuana, police in New York said this week. On Thursday's officials with the Rochester Police Department in upstate New York announced charges against two parents uh, in the death of their three-month-old child. The two parents were charged with manslaughter after... Uh, the incident and the incident occurred on August 3rd when Hawkins and Weaver left their three month old baby in the attic of their residence while they went downstairs to smoke marijuana. The parents left their child in the attic with two dogs, the Rochester Police Department said. After smoking marijuana, the two parents traveled back up to the attack where they discovered that their child had been mauled by either one or both of the dogs that were in the room. The parents quickly transported the three month old to a nearby hospital yeah, where he was pronounced a deceased. Yeah, this one, though. Like, uh, like, like I've been around a lot of stoners. It just you just don't forget about your baby in the attic. No, you it's know, it's not even the, about the, what the, that article the doesn't say. It, it could be it could be hundred percent fact, right? And then if you looked at stats on what happens, I mean, there's a lot of really crummy parents in America. I'm not trying to advocate for one way though. This is an awful story. No, but I, it is. You know, again, I I'm here to kind of talk about the money component. I think there's a lot of money going against uh le legalization nationwide for sure namely tobacco uh One, like, alcohol it, it, like hit pieces like this it, where it just this sounds cannabis... to me it just smells like a hit piece you're not you know they're not promoting child welfare they're not it's just, just oh, they demonizing. were cannabis smokers really yeah. what else did they do did they drink a bottle of fucking jack daniels that night you know were they shooting up the day before like give me the context but when they do this I, I really, I'd love to know that source, and what, but it, it goes deeper. You know, it's an awful story, but it is. It and happens what, every what, day. What should be the, the, the uh, title? The lesson here, or can, cannabis should have just read been, me the title again. Read me the title of that article. Baby fatally mauled by dogs while parents smoked cannabis downstairs. Jeez, you know, when I, when I speak at uh, our cannabis conventions, dude, like we show videos of what they used to do when they blamed cannabis on the African-American community, 
the, the, this cancer, they called it. They called it the jazz curse and they tied it to jazz music and, and the demonization of cannabis, what they did. Yeah. Right? No, it's, and every, they call it reefer angle. madness. And there's this amazing 30 second clip that we show that they used to show at Nickelodeon's like the previews. And it's like, you know, white women jumping out of the window because they're being raped and suicide. And it's like, dude, when I hear articles like that, that's what I hear because it's clickbait of why are you demonizing this? I guarantee you there's something bigger in that family going on than, than the than, family than smoking the weed that the kids got eaten by dogs. Yeah, yeah. no, I think the, the true lesson here is that, you know, you your dog truly is a reflection of your owner. Of, of the owner of course woof, and woof. like you know what you put into is what you get out of it and if you neglect you know a, a life that you know you are taking responsibility and accountability for then things are gonna go wrong it's not the cannabis that was uh you know the the crutch of this whole situation it's yeah just, this article made me sad what do, do we have something better for the next segment connor like i i hope to god this is going to be like enlightening or something because uh, that one let me tell you when sad. we come back yeah what do we got we have uh our spliffs in tobacco okay. making its comeback in the cannabis world I Obvi- rock with obviously that. we have europe and the the middle east that you know use their tobacco but the west not so much, but I think it's creeping up. So when we come back, I'm something gonna... more enlightening and more uplifting. Yes, oh, not quite as sad. But we'll one. be right back. Then little children get mauled by dogs. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. We're on track. Oh, Here we go. <laughs> Dead babies and dogs. <laughs> Segment three. Episode 11, 12, segment three, take one. No children dying in this segment. No. No dogs eating them. No. Just nicotine addiction. Yes. <laughs> Devil. <laughs> Have you seen the latest edition of the Cannabis Talk magazine? It has some of the greatest articles and some of the coolest stories in it. Get yourself a hard copy today at your local dispensary or smoke shop near you. If they don't have it, have them hit us up and request some copies. Or go check out the magazine online, which you can see on our YouTube right here. Thank you, Daniel. At CannabisTalkMagazine.com and subscribe now. Now, Tony... Before we get on into it, we yes, just got to thank the team real quick. So thank you all for all the hard Let's work go. you do. Uh, everyone's keeping it pushing. We got a lot of fun things coming. Producer Daniel. We got Daniel. We got we Tony got right Jennifer, here. Jennifer, Erica, front, you know. Cam Lace, Baxter's in Lacey the building. Lacey floating around in the inner space. La, 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 la. <laughs> so thank you all for all your hard work. Everybody that would miss as well. Yeah, for sure. So uh, in our final segment, we're going to pick back up with something a little bit more uh, upbeat. And that cannabis and tobacco use is on the rise, especially oh, among spliff. older adults. Some spliff, some Euro style. The number of Americans using both cannabis and tobacco is increasing with particular surge among older adults. Researchers at Duke University School of Medicine who analyzed two decades of national data warned that the combination posed greater health risks than the dangers of using either substance alone. That's fucking fantastic. Uh, in 2021, 6.38% of U.S. adults reported using both cannabis and tobacco within the past month. While this might seem as a relatively small percentage, it's a big jump from the previous years. Uh, researchers attribute the trend to more states legalizing marijuana and people becoming more accepting and comfortable with cannabis. When looking at the 2021 data, younger individuals, people with lower educational attainment, and residing in a state with medical marijuana law were most likely to report co-use. So they said that it's it's worse to use them together than either of them separate. That's hard to believe, man. Like with tobacco, like I, I I'd rather smoke it. Uh, well, define worse, right? It, what is their I measure mean, of worse? I is mean, it, it the, just says. Uh, you know, what I'm saying these the these articles get really words are powerful. They so are. what is worse? Yeah, let's let's like let, let let's use by comparison, right? So I've never been a tobacco user. I'm not a stoner by all intents and definition. I smoke weed at night to go to bed when I'm hungry, when I'm you know, just feeling silly. Yeah. But tobacco by itself was never hooked either. And now the vape thing happened. 
Yeah. So it's the definition of them combined that, you know, now I'm like, oh, maybe I'll hit the weed vape more than the tobacco vape. Like, I, again, clickbait articles. I think what's happening is the word cannabis, uh-huh. vape, tobacco. Like, there's these words that people know if they can throw them in articles, they will be magnified by platforms like this. Uh-huh. They will be magnified by articles that you found. And it is feeding a higher agenda. You see what I'm doing here, though? You yes. see, like every article that you come across now, right now, brother, like, it can, you can look at it through a filter of money. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. No, dude. There's, is it Philip Morris banking this? Is it, you know, Stizzy? Is it the cannabis community? Like, you never know. They're all guilt, and, and they're getting smarter. I think, obviously, Big Tobacco has had decades to master this. Yeah. They have plants right now in every, I'm not going to name a single name, but every major cannabis company right now that would come off your, yep, that's them. They're already being funded, lobbied by, have plants, have, there's levels to this shit. You, you realize I say this about a lot, but that's what it is. Yeah. There's money in that article with what you just popped up That's money. And money deciphers those keywords, cannabis, addiction, tobacco. And it's not to help the user. It's not to help the reader. It's not to enlighten you with information. Very true. You see what I'm saying? Very true. Obviously, I'm seeing it for a reason. Someone wanted to will this into existence. And therefore, it was most likely funded. And you know, told that it needs and to be. And the question is, who funded it, right? Yeah, that's, that's where we the, can have fun that's with the fun it, part right? Always <laughs> to go track the money. You go trail. down the rabbit hole. Just like when I found out that Just Stop Oil was funded by an oil baron. You know what Come I'm on, saying? Like, yeah. it, you, you, you really want to go do down your those, due diligence. That's where really I'll leave this off. Black with. Lives Matter, dude. Like you just I, you I, really I, go down those rabbit holes, and you really realize, like, wow, what we thought we were chanting for parading for advocating for dialing for it's not what you think it is and it's not political it's it's money it's always money yeah no it's uh definitely the ultimate motivator and it makes the world go round and uh it's definitely you know there people aren't as moral as you would think uh, and especially with more money that there is a there's an expression that i heard uh, I had a girl from back in the day. She was very into holistic medicine and foo foo food. And I used to make fun of her, dude. I was like eating fast food all the time. And she, she's like, milk's bad for you. And I was like, shut the fuck up. You know, so I go down these rabbit holes. And once you really go down the rabbit hole of milk and what the government did with milk and the school yeah, program. Yeah. And then you're like, milk. shit, like milk's really not good for me. But it's truly too big to fail, you know. And I said this expression, and I've heard it from other people. It's like, ignorance is bliss. Like, if you truly understand what we're eating, what we're drinking, what we're consuming, to really go down that, it's an exhausting, sleepless, just waking up to it. Like, Well, yeah, then you you realize, like... like, Was I really better off not knowing? Like, No, seriously, like, (laughs) every choice you make, every choice you make is, like, probably a bad one at this point. So It it, truly is. You know, like, the ignorance is bliss is such such facts. (laughs) I've never appreciated that word more. And then I remember, like, I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, milk? But it did a body good. Like, Tom Brady had a mustache. Like, that's what we're... But then we went down the rabbit hole with everything else now. It's like, dude, sometimes I'm just... When we were kids, I ate my Happy Meal. We played stickball in the street. Michelle like, Obama took my cookies from middle <laughs> school. They, oh, they were so good. And then yeah, they went that to food whole, pyramid, whole That grain. food pyramid is upside down. And it's probably even it's just, worse than what like, we were getting before. Everything in the food pyramid that you've been teaching these kids to eat, it's just an upside down pyramid. Nope. Don't eat none of that. Eat more of the shit you're told not to eat. But. Yes, eat the uh, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, the wheats that the, have been controlled. The Monsanto, yellow this, the red, the milk red 40 that. that. absolutely awful for you. Everything. Just milk. If you can, just grow your own stuff. Well, I think <laughs> I feel like we should run a suicide hotline number at the end of this because this was a depressing, like, negative shit. But let me let me turn it brighter. I think, okay. I think with, with information, there's power. 
I think as much as we say uh, ignorance is bliss, but ignorance or uh, information can also be freedom. And I think the more you educate yourself, the more you know what you're getting in for. And you know what? You want to go to McDonald's tomorrow after what you know? Do it. That's your power. That's your freedom that you have. But, but you know, maybe, maybe you take this opportunity to kind of re-question everything you read, learn, and comprehend. Definitely. No, uh, no harm and a little bit of awareness. So I guess our, our main lesson from today is introspection. You should uh, question what you read. Yeah, man. Take a look in the mirror. See what's going down. Run it through filters. Tony, is there anything else you'd like to tap into before we get on out of here? You guys, give it up for Connor. You know, he's been holding the fort down here. He, we, we did this little ad lib. I popped in, but I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do for my show. Thank Financial you. Friday is here on CT 101, and you, you always provide good color commentary. You got great research. Guys, if there's one takeaway, just read, read, read. Consume more information from every angle. Don't believe everything you read. That's all I got. There we go. It's been Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande, your world's number one source for everything cannabis. And remember this, if no one else loves you, we we do. do.